Hi folks, welcome back to the channel, Moza here again. Thank you so much for watching the previous video on the club strategies. Seems to have gone down really well and got a bit of discussion going, which was the whole point of it. Um, hopefully, as soon as Beta gets rolled out to us all, we'll come up with new ways of looking at Futium and ways we can manage our clubs, get philosophies in place. I'm really interested to see how it develops, especially with the community that's building behind the game. I'm actually really excited about the future and this game getting launched fully. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, it'll be by the end of quarter one. So by the end of March, we should have a full release on the game. And I'll obviously bring you gameplay uh, as soon as it's there for us as well. For today though, we're going to look at something that's quite important to Footium itself. It is a play turn game. You need to buy your club, so you put a deep, good initial investment in, and um, quite a lot of money, you need to know how you're going to get that back. Now the team behind the game have given us a, basically a, a layout, a structure of the prize pools and how you earn money through the game. So let's get into it, we'll find out how it works and basically how you can make a bit of bank. Now before we get right into things, firstly, same thing always applies in these Futium videos or any time I talk about a project that is in crypto that involves investment. I am not a financial advisor, so I cannot give you any financial advice or recommendations based on whether you should jump in to any project. I have chosen to do this with my own money, did a lot of research and did not jump in straight away. Make sure you're comfortable before you make any decisions and a financial advisor is there to help if you're not. And just before we get right into things, consider dropping a like or a subscription on the video. If you drop a subscription, my up-to-date videos will always pop into your sub box on YouTube, so you'll never miss one. A like helps more people see this. So if you want to help spread the word of Footium, or you just want to make sure that other people get the same information that you're getting right now, consider hitting that little thumbs up button down the bottom. With that said though, let's get straight into five pools. And let's start right off, I'll pop over to the screen now, on the overview that's been laid out by George, the new COO of Footy. By the way, well done, George, congrats. I love the way they've described this because they're looking for sustainability. We've seen a lot, a lot of crypto projects referred to, as they say here, as Ponzi's, as Ponzi-nomics, Ponzi schemes. What they are doing here is firstly telling you what their plan is and secondly explaining why it's sustainable and it is not just reliant on new money coming into the space every time. Love the transparency of it, love the thought process behind it and as we go through everything that's been added to this particular Medium article which is obviously linked down below as always, there's clearly a lot of thought and effort and time being put into this and I appreciate it. So let's start with Academy Minting. They've got Breakdown here in terms of internal monies and external monies. This is an internal game mechanic because when you get to the end of every season, as you'll probably know if you've seen my previous videos, you get 10 players coming through your academy in the form of an M NFT that you can choose to mint, essentially you have a long-term contract to, or you can just play them and they'll disappear after three seasons. Now, if you choose to mint a player, you need to pay to mint them, so you're paying to give them a long-term contract. And it's been disclosed to give you a rough idea of how much this will cost. At a bottom tier club, Division 8, generally it'll be around about $10 per player. That money has to go somewhere. And while Footium might take a small cut of that in terms of a profit margin, most of that money will go into the prize pool. And the way that it works, according to the article, is all the revenue generated from the 12 clubs in each league, so just your individual league, not the overall division, will, will flow directly into the prize pool for that league. So depending on your op opposition in your specific league, how many players get minted, that money will go straight into the prize pool. The second mechanic internally, and then again, another one that makes perfect sense is on the transfer market. So when players are going to be bought and sold, there will be a fee taken from each transaction. And they've laid out a pretty handy uh, equation to explain this as well. Um, 
there is an example there, but we don't know what the actual fee will be. All we know is it will be pretty small. But the example given is a $200 transfer. Of that, $10 goes as a fee, and that would go into the prize pool, at least the majority of it would. So again, the way this is laid out appears to be a league system rather than a division system. So instead of all the teams at your tier, at your level, getting that cut, it appears to be the 12 teams in that league. That league's prize pool will be increased by every transfer made. So again, they're rewarding individual leagues for being competitive, being active, and basically the more competitive the league is, the bigger the prize pool should be, in theory. Moving on from league specific prize pool additions, legendary player auctions are mentioned. The first season of Footium will see 50 of these players auctioned. We could see some big, big fees for those. And then it'll be 20 players every season after that. 20 legendary cards um, will be auctioned off on the general market. From what the explanation is in this article, that prize pool rake will go across every single league and every single division. So to give you an example, one legendary player sells for 20th. Who knows, it could happen. It's unlikely, but it could happen. That 20th will then be split across every single division and every single league's prize pool for that coming season. So the expectation I would imagine here is there'll be quite a bit of the ether generated through these 20 players or the 50 in the first season and that should filter into making some really interesting prize pools especially going down the levels as well. While we're talking about the money generation side of things let me take a quick second here to explain on the club improvement side as well because there's a few little nuggets of information thrown in here maybe slightly under the radar and um, because it answers a few questions that people have had especially in discord about what uh, potentially the Footium token when it comes along can be used for. So George makes specific reference to some purely cosmetic things as well as other things that might have an impact on your club and your player performance. Things like a Hall of Fame, uh, statues for legendary players, improving your stadium itself, possible kit changes as well. I must say I'm fully on board with their philosophy that club names and club colours and club badges shouldn't change. Big fan of that because you need to have that consistency to build up the history of clubs in the system. However, I would like to see potential upgrades to badges, so keeping the, the spirit of the badges, but allowing people maybe to pay the designer that Footium use to come up with more of a professional looking badge like the ones at the top couple of tiers I've got. Maybe reserving that to say a top three tiers prize. So your reward for getting up to the top three tiers is to be able to get, ask and pay for an upgrade on your badge. I think that would be a fair solution, to be honest. So that covers all the internal game mechanics that will produce money towards prize pools. Now we get into the external side and this is quite interesting because Everything we've covered up till now is basically guaranteed to happen. We know that even on the legendary player auction side, we know they'll all sell and we know they'll get a decent price. Now we move into the realms of we're relying on certain things to happen for this money to be generated, relying on the game's success. We'll start off with sponsorship because this is something that I'd considered in a way but I hadn't really fully thought through until I read about it. Sponsorship of Futium divisions is being introduced. So say if there is a company involved in crypto or even just with an interest in the space that wants to sponsor all of tier 8, they can do so. And that sponsorship money, while some will go to Futium as a cut, the rest will go into the prize pools. The revenue gained from the sponsorship would be split evenly across all leagues in that division as well. So. Again, that makes sense. If they're sponsoring the whole tier, every club should benefit from that, assuming they're doing well and they earn the money through the prize pools. But if anyone is watching this video and they think, well, I might want to do that with my company, George's information is in that article. Give him an email. Can I just get in touch and see how much it would cost, even if it's just a, an inquiry and go from there. 
Other things that are mentioned here include the Fitium token itself, because part of that will be used in all prize pools across all leagues and all divisions. Uh, other items, for example, rare legendary players, academy improvements, because staking of that Fitium token is something that people can use to make their academy better, to potentially increase their attendance at games. Part of that will go to all prize pools. Again, that would be spread across the divisions. Finally, the article goes on to simulation and basically giving the caveat that as things continue and as things get tested in the game itself, they obviously can make adjustments. Again, this is a very sensible way to look at things I would suggest. Nothing is set in stone because they want to make it the best game it can be. Having said that though, they have come up with a example of what each prize pool could look like in each league in each division. So let's get into it. Just now, again, let's switch over to the article. So for the prize pools per league, Division 1, the top tier, they're suggesting that it could be a total of $25,600, depending on these uh, set assumptions that are laid out, and I'll make sure I cover them as well. All the way down to Division 8, per league being in mind, so this is not per division, per individual 12-team league, they're suggesting it could, but it could be $858 in your Division 8 league if you're starting at the bottom, which I am and many others are as well. That would go to first place, second place and third place in practice. And again, George has put a, a breakdown of this for us as well. So winning your Division 8 league could see you earn just over $400, whereas coming third could see you earn around about $170. At the very top tier, if you're the best team in Footium, $12,800 for a season sounds like a pretty good prize, to be fair. But let's couple that with the assumptions that are made in this layout with these tables. So, what George has done is firstly, all figures are in dollars, which makes sense, as most crypto is. They are assuming a 5% transaction fee on player sales, which is the example used earlier on in the article as well, and I think that's a fair transaction fee to impose, in all honesty. The club finishing top of the league receives 50% of the prize pool regardless of what it is, second place receives 30%, and third place receives 20%. Again, I think that's a fair breakdown. Um, you wouldn't want third place to be less than 20%, um, but you're obviously rewarding better performance with first and second as well. The only issue I've seen raised with this by certain people so far is that only three teams per league are receiving these prizes and whether that could potentially be rolled out to four, five, six teams in the future, which will be interesting to see how it develops. What I would suggest is if the money coming into the game is more than expected, I would expect to see those positions rewarded in due course, fourth place, fifth place, sixth place. But if the money is around about what they're expecting, expect it to stay with the top three teams in leagues, given that there will also be cup competitions to generate prizes for as well. But just to get back to those assumptions, what George has assumed in this article is that the average price of players bought for the top tier would be $500, for the bottom tier, tier 8, would be $50. Again, I think that's a pretty sensible, if not maybe conservative estimate. When you look at games like Zed Run, horses trade for over $50 all the time at the bottom end. I suspect the average price of players at the bottom tier will be higher than $50, so it might actually be a higher price pool. Proof will be in the pudding though, we'll soon find out. They're also assuming for academy minting, as I said, it would be $10 to mint a player at the bottom tier. They've actually said $15 and $20 going up to the next two tiers. I suspect it might be more than that as we get into things, but we'll soon find out. If they can keep the prices down on the minting side, again, there is absolutely no problem with that because it makes the game more accessible, I would suggest, as well. The interesting thing about this though, that maybe has flown under the radar, is not the fact that they're assuming that sponsorships per season could be $5,000 as an average per division, or an average per cup. The interesting thing for me here is in club improvements, because they're suggesting the average spend 
on club improvements for say a team in the bottom tier would be twenty dollars, at the top tier it could be two hundred dollars. I again think that's conservative. I think people will spend more than that to get their fan base up, to get the cosmetic items. There's already been a real push from people to get their own kits designed, uh, other cosmetic aspects of the game like their badges. I could easily see a world where that is doubled if not tripled. Um, obviously it might change season to season depending on what's on offer, but the more I read this article the more I think that the prize pools might actually end up bigger than what they're suggesting at the moment. So there it is, a quick breakdown of the recent prize pool article released by Footium. We will obviously get more details on this as it comes along and I'll bring it to you, especially when it comes to the cups as well. It'll be interesting to see how far you need to go in a cup to get those rewards. Um, because obviously some of the, the Cubs competitions will be much harder for smaller teams down the, the levels, down the divisions, to make an impact on. But we will see what happens. But until then, thank you very much again for spending your time with me today and watching. Next week, I'm hoping to bring you some more in-depth information about the game itself, the mechanics, the stats, the attributes of the players. We will see if I can get that to you. Either it will be next week or the week after as well as beta gameplay as soon as I have it. I might actually live stream that, so keep an eye on my Twitter, at PensaTFC will be the place to find out any information about what I'm doing with Footium as we go along. But until then, consider dropping a like, leaving a subscribe for further videos in the future. Every Friday afternoon and evening will be my Footium content, as well as a few other videos thrown in for the banter as well. You'll get a Zed Racing video soon, as well as that Futera video that I've been working on for a couple of weeks. But until then, thank you very much again. Enjoy your weekends. Catch you later on.